John Beltran, Dave Urich, back from Bee Digger Stadium, moments away from the kickoff of tonight's game between the Bee Diggers and Sterling Tigers as the captains are out at midfield, which for Brush includes Randy Baker, Javier Munoz, and Maverick Seawald, three seniors in the final home game of the regular season. Dave and I will be back here, I'm sure, on November 2nd for a first-round Class 2A playoff game, and for the first time, maybe ever, at least since I can remember, the state championship game will be held before Thanksgiving. It'll be on November 23rd, and the B-Diggers continue to play the, the way they've been playing. Hopefully they'll make their first trip to the state championship game in three seasons. The B-Diggers are coached by Randy Dreitz, assisted by Lance Schwint, Dick Creighton, Matt Manier, David Cummings, and Court Marquez. Rob Busmente, the head coach of the Tigers, assisted by Todd Tonch. Aaron Edinger, Paul Garcia, Aaron Lambertson. Remember that name, Dave, Aaron Lambertson for the Akron days. You and I both uh, saw him play live. Heck of a player. Ed Revord and James Brown. And the Tigers making their way onto the field. Opening kickoff tonight. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Let the State Farm Insurance Office of Greg Mullen and Brush help you find the best policy to fit your life, home, auto, life, and health. State Farm Insurance is here for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call, 842-4555. That's Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. The Bee Diggers in virtually every game this season. Well, I should say four of the six games have eclipsed 40 points. Although the two games they didn't score, 40, 28 against Platte Valley, 22 against Fort Morgan, were certainly very good, respectable offensive efforts. Omar Fierro to kick it off for the Bee Diggers. The Sterling Tigers are still not out on the field in terms of a special teams unit. Bee Diggers last week did it again. Dave, they've come up with a turnover in every game this year. And I tell you, what about that Alec Peterson? I tell you what, he seems like he's got a nose for the ball, but <laughs> you know, we were talking about savvy, you know, there's a guy that's watched football in sports his whole life and and when you do that you learn you know what to expect on certain plays and down in distance and when you have that in your back pocket you got a lot of better lot better chances ethan rose and dj graves are back to receive standing at the five yard line fierro gives it a short boot it bounces at the 31 and the ball is bobbled at the 31 but it's pounced upon by a tiger that being jake busmente only a sophomore Pretty good field position. The Bee Diggers normally don't allow good field position, but it was a short kick. So the Tigers have it at their own 31-yard line to begin this game. James Skurjanic is the starting quarterback. They'll line up off that right hash mark. And you'll see a lot of Avery Stutzman, a 6'1", 185-pound senior in the backfield. Two receivers out to the left. Out of a shotgun. Skurjanic on first and ten with a man out to the right. Now in motion to the left is Jake Busmente. And we've got a flag down. And that was a mess even before the first play. Illegal procedure against Sterling Dave. Not the way you want to start the game, especially against the number one team in the state. Yeah, you know, they're, the kid was lined up over there in the slot on the right side. And, and then he, back, he came out of his stance and backed up into position. He froze as soon as he went in motion, as soon as he moved the officials through the flag. First and 15 for the 26. You can follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports. Turn on mobile notifications. You'll receive scoring updates as they happen. Rose in motion to the right. And another procedure penalty. Wow. I have never seen this before the first play from scrimmage. I don't think I've seen one procedure penalty before the first play from scrimmage. Now we see it back-to-back. -back. Yeah, back-to-back. -back, that's crazy. And, you know, it makes you wonder, but... You know, some of those things kind of happen. You know, they're lining up back there in that shotgun formation. They're coming out with all this motion right off the bat. And when you have a lot of different formations and, and you come out and trying to start doing fancy stuff, that's what happens. First and 20 from the 16. Rose in motion. He gets the handoff. Running left. Swings it to the outside of the 20 yard. Seam across the 25 and is tackled at the 29 yard line. Or checked out across the 30 to the 34. So I lost my way there. And so did the Bee Digger defense. That's a gain of 18 yards. And all of a sudden, you're looking at, uh, or check that, 13. 13 yards. Yeah, second and seven. Boy, I, I think I've lost it all here. Yeah, it was just I got that the fly offense. Track. 
Yeah, that, it was slow moving, too. It's, it's, our end just got hooked inside. From the 34, second down and about seven. In motion to the right is Rose Skrinchanik. We'll hand it off to Rose, running wide to the right. He's running out of room, and Kalen Brandt is going to throw him down for a huge loss back at the 27-yard line. It might give him the 28, a loss of six, and all of a sudden what was favorable after one play is disadvantageous after the other. You know, Brandt just did a great job. He was over there fighting that outside shoulder of the, of the tight end on that side, and he just never allowed the kid to control him on the outside. So he kept gaining ground and working up field and then stretching it to the sideline, and as soon as Rose passed him, he just jumped on him and threw him down. Third down and 13 for Sterling. With a football at their own 28-yard line, Skurjanic out of a shotgun, man in motion to the left. Skurjanic has the football, back to throw, throws to his right, the pass is incomplete. Behind the intended receiver, Ethan Rose, at the 39-yard line, well defended by the beat diggers, and it's a three and out for Sterling as they will have to punt. It was a miscommunication for Sterling as the receiver was headed downfield, and then he threw it towards the sideline. It was like one of those patterns you sometimes you see in the pros when Manning throws it you know, behind the receiver. And it just didn't work that time. Ethan Rose will punt, standing at his own 15. A low snap. Here comes the rush, and he barely gets it off. A high, short punt. b has got to watch out. Takes a couple of bounces. It takes a sterling roll to the 40-yard line. So it's down right there, a punt of 32 yards. And the B-Diggers with 10.22 to go in the opening quarter. Have it first and 10 at their own 40-yard line. So if that's any indication of the field, um... That says a lot because the ball, it was, you know, it was a high punt. Normally it would have bounced, you know, five yards up in the air. And that time once it hit the ground, it barely bounced at all and only rolled a few more yards down the field. Yeah, I was going to say on another night it would have taken a much bigger roll. Yeah. We'll get to the beat digger starting lineup here momentarily. The quarterback is Kyle Rosenbrock. Mikey Gutierrez is the lone setback. Two receivers out to the left and the right. Randy Baker's one of those receivers. There's the handoff to Gutierrez running across the left side. He's got very little, maybe a yard. He was swallowed up second down and nine. The Bay Diggers with a very solid core of position players. Baker, Alec Peterson, Nico Guzman, Mikey Gutierrez, Kalen Brandt at tight end. Offensive line with Tristan Teeter, Jacob Nichols, Maverick Seawald. Oscar Soto, Joe Carwin, Jose Rodriguez. That's six that I've named. They'll rotate some of those players. Second down and nine to go for the beat diggers. They're on 41-yard line. 9.45 to go opening quarter. No score. We've got that horizontal eye on second down. There's the give off the left side and a big hole and a first down for Alec Peterson breaking a tackle along the sideline to the 30. Peterson to the 20. Peterson to the 10. And he's tackled, I believe, just short of the end zone for Alec Peterson. After breaking one tackle, he nearly went the distance, but it's first and goal for the B-Diggers, and that ball looks like it's placed at the one-yard line. It'll be a gain of 58. He was just like a rocket, you know, but the Diggers were running that T formation, and then they made a really good fake to the outside off that, you know, the, off the dive series that they have, and, and it just fooled some of the some of the Sterling Tigers as they went for our off-tackle running back. First and goal for the B-Diggers. Will it be Baker, Gutierrez, or Peterson? Rosenbrock hands it off to Baker, left side, cuts it back. It's an easy touchdown for Randy Baker from one yard out with 9.19 to go in the opening quarter. And the B-Diggers holding a 6-0 lead with the extra point to come. Dave, a lot of quick drives this year for the B-Diggers because of that huge play ability. That just being a 63-second drive. You know, and it's not off anything fancy. You know, that's the that's the really cool thing. You go against teams that run all this crazy stuff. Diggers came out and ran three dive plays back to back to back, but they out-executed them with some great blocking. Extra point is upcoming by Javier Munoz. Off the hold of Ryan Hirschfeld. Good snap. The kick is up, and that kick looks good from here. And it is, no, off to the right. Just off to the right is the signal. We'll keep it right here. First B-Digger score of the game brought to you by MMI International. Before your next mixer or feed or truck purchase, compare the MMI design, craftsmanship, and service. They outperform their competitors. Hands down, call them 842-5161. That's MMI International. Yeah, Dave, he must have barely missed that because I didn't. It looked good. You know, it was a high kick. It had that nice little backspin on it. And 
boy, from here, I thought it was through well, the uprights, but it was so high it was hard to judge. I'm going to tell you why he missed it, Dave. There looked like there was a rush coming in from the left side. I don't know if you saw that, but I yeah. think that's what pushed the ball basically a little bit off to the right. He was trying to compensate. But again, with 9.19 left in the first quarter, the bee diggers already are on the scoreboard, as has been the custom for Brush. I mean, they have really not messed around this year. The diggers paying attention to the condition of the field. Fierro setting the ball up over closer to the left hash mark. They even moved another uh, guy on this side of the kicker just to accommodate the, the mushy field. That's a better kick, and it nearly bounced over the head of the Sterling player at the 15-yard line across the 20 to about the 26 or 27. That's D.J. Graves before the B-Diggers are there on special teams. Eddie Arribas making the tackle for the B-Diggers. So, and Cameron Alexander also around the football. Yeah, I'll brush. tell you what, Arrivas flew down there. But I was watching Clay Shaver on that play, and he did a really good job of, of not going too far down the field. He stayed in front of the return man, and he stayed on the outside, and that kind of kept him corralled over there by that sideline. So he did a good job of keeping that containment. First and ten for the bead diggers, or check that, for the Sterling Tigers at their own 26-yard line. Brush with a 6 nothing lead. Out of a shotgun. Skurjanic will throw it out in the right flat. Caught by Rose along the sideline. Cuts it back to the inside across the 30. He nearly has a first down, and he might across the 35 towards the 36-yard line. First contact made by Kyle Rosenbrock, but a very easy pass out in the right flat. And it's a first down for the Tigers as the football is going to be placed just beyond the 36. They'll put it at the 37-yard line, give them a gain of 11. Just a real quick pass, but I'll tell you what, he paid the price. Soto had him flat on his back back there. I don't think Skirjanic's going to want to stand there and throw the ball like that much longer. The lone setback is Avery Stutzman. First and 10 for Sterling at their own 37-yard line. Man in motion as Ethan rose to the left, and now we have another, are you kidding me, another procedure penalty. Dave, where is that happening? Well, it was their right guard jumped. But part of that was because Soto and, and um, Seawald, they're both playing that defensive tackle, so they're kind of lining up across from the guard or maybe in the B gap. It's hard to see from here. But they shifted over to the right side. They stemmed. And then when they stemmed back right before the count, that's what caused the kid to jump. So it's first and 15 for Sterling at their own 32-yard line. Three minutes into the game, the B-Diggers off a 58-yard run by Alec Peterson. Got a one-yard TD from Randy Baker and leads 6 nothing. Two receivers out to the left. Rose in motion to the right. Now he'll set up in the backfield. Skurjanic out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Rose. Running right up the middle. He's got a little hole. And he's hit after a gain of about four. Across the 35 to the 36. And Kyle Rosenbrock in on the play. Second down. We'll call it 11 for Sterling. Yeah, 11-yard rushing now for Rose, and then the pass. He's really the guy, isn't he? He's the one they're going to put the ball in his hands every time. The diggers, are, it's going to be kind of easy for him to start zeroing in on him. Second down and 11 for the Tigers at their own 36-yard line. Looking for their fourth win of the year. The beat diggers trying to improve to 7-0. and Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Rose again in motion to the right, and for some reason, this has ha it happened twice. Right there on the right side, the tackle and the guard both moved. Dave, i got to tell you, to this point, I hate to use this word, but that's embarrassing. When it's happening four times in the first two possessions that you jump like that on the Sterling side, it's almost like they've never played together. Right. There's just too much going on. You know, they have all that motion. They're bringing the guy back around. The quarterback's trying to coordinate all that. And I don't know if he's making a false count, if he's making a mistake, or, you know, if the kids are going on some sort of a signal. Whatever it is. It's not working. Second down and 16 for Sterling at their own 31-yard line. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. Rose in motion. There's an option play, and the pitch right to Stutzman. He's got nothing, and he's hit around the ankles in the backfield. An excellent play over there by the beat diggers. I think that was Kalen Brant, and it was. And Brant has been big throughout the course of the season. Throws him down for a loss of two. It'll be third and 18. Well, you know, he's tall, and he's rangy, and, you know, there's a great example of a kid that's been in there and, and played a lot. You know, the last few years, he, he was the guy that stepped in at quarterback for us a lot of the time when we were a long ways ahead for our junior varsity team. So he's had a lot of playing time in, in, on the varsity level. 
Third and 18 from the 29. They've got to make it to the 47. Skurjanic out of a shotgun. Has the football. Fakes to his left. Looking. No pass rush. Throw deep over the middle. That's going to be incomplete. Intended for Rose at the beat digger 40-yard line. He did have plenty of time to throw that football. However, the secondary was solid there. There was no way a pass was going to be complete on that one. Especially Maltos Garcia is our free safety. <laughs> and he went over there to try to have some coverage. There, and he slipped in the mud. And then that's what caused the kid to trip over the top of him. So, you know, they weren't able to call a pass interference penalty on us because of the conditions. Rose to punt once again at his own 16. Low snap. Here comes the rush. He gets it off. This one is a fluttering punt. A little bit short. And a beat digger has got to watch out. Eddie Rivas does a nice job. He gets out of the way. And the ball dies at the 49-yard line of Brush. But that's only a 22-yard punt. And the Bee Diggers have excellent field position with 6.52 to go in the opening quarter. And the Bee Diggers holding a 6 to nothing lead. And the officials out there discussing something. I know the ball didn't make contact with Arivas unless they're conferring on something else. The lineup on the right hash mark. Bee Digger starting lineup tonight brought to you by Blow Door and Lumber. 130 State Street. You can browse the virtual showroom, view the current sales completer credit application at blowdornlumber.com on first and 10 from the 49 yard line Peterson is in motion to the right there's the give on the counter to Gutierrez running left and he's got a couple of yards and not much more maybe a third yard in fact he wasn't even tackled he was stood up by Darren Sanders a 5'9", 195 pound senior we'll give him a gain of a couple second down and eight to go yeah, Brush just sticking with that double tight formation and, and the T backfield, and they're just content to run right at him. And that time, that was one of our 30 series plays that gives us a little bit of cross buck action, but didn't fool the Tigers. The Tigers are in a five man front. Baker and Gutierrez remain in the backfield. Second down and eight from the Sterling 49 yard line. Brush leading six to nothing. Midway through the opening quarter, Kalen Brantz is in motion to the left. Rosenbrock is back to throw off his back foot. The pass is. Complete or an incomplete off the left hand of the intended receiver, Nico Guzman, had a shot to make that catch. It's third down and eight to go for Brush. Rosenbrock actually threw it before Nico looked for the ball. It was a timing pattern. It was right on the money. Nico just, when you turn around and you try to find a ball like that, it's tough. He just juggled it. Well, this is four down territory, Dave. Even though it's only at the Sterling 49, we know that Coach Dreitz does not like to punt the football unless it's an obvious situation. In fact, it's hard to pinpoint the last time the Bee Diggers did punt the ball. Third down and eight at the 49-yard line of the Tigers. In motion to the right is Alec Peterson. Rosenbrock will turn. He will hand it off to Baker, breaking a tackle. First down across the 40 to the 37. Randy Baker was hit about three yards down the field, but he's got so much speed and breakaway ability. He gains 12 yards, and the drive continues for the Bee Diggers. Just some great blocking there. I'll tell you what, the, we put Brant in motion, and then um, the kids headed upfield. And I'll tell you what, Jacob Nichols did a really good job of sealing off his guy to make sure there was a hole there for, for Baker to run through. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers at the Sterling 37 yard line. Brush leading 6 to nothing, 5.43 to go in the opening quarter. Receiver split to the left and right. Brant in motion to the left. Rosenbrock on the pitch left to Gutierrez to the 35 along the sideline to the 25 he is still running inside the 15 yard line and then he's taken down by Ethan Rose but a big gainer for Mikey Gutierrez and the beat diggers have another first down as the football looks like it will be placed at the 15 yard line which would be a gain of 22. It's hard to say what the defense is that Sterling's running. It's definitely a five-man front, and they change sides with their guys. So, you know, the coaches, uh, Coach Dreitz and Coach Swint, they can see which side they want to run the ball to just by changing their formation. They come out in a 300 or a 400, 500, 600 formation, and then they can change which side Sterling has their strong defensive tackles on. So the coaches just change their formation and set Sterling up. First down and 10 for Brush at the Sterling 15-yard line, looking to extend a one-touchdown lead. Three in the backfield. Now Peterson is in motion to the right. There's the give to Gutierrez, cutting it back to the middle to the 10-yard line, still driving, runs into some Tigers, but gains sizable yardage inside the 10 to about the 7. 
It'll be a gain of eight, second down, and two to go for Brush. Yeah, so Mikey's got four carries and 33 yards. And again, Diggler, Digger's not doing anything fancy. They just run the, that, that dive over on the left side. They're just having a lot of luck behind Carwin and Seawald over there. Yeah, I'll say this for Sterling, that when they tackle, they gang tackle. It's hard to identify just one player to make a hit. They have to. Yeah, because the bead diggers are running hard. Second down and two for the Sterling seven. There's the give to Baker, left side along the sideline. He should get in, and he is into the end zone for Randy Baker. He got the corner. He scores for the second time in the game, and the bead diggers now lead 12 to nothing. Seven yards for Randy Baker on the TD. Yeah, just out of that fullback formation, and it's kind of a sweep around the outside. Boy, the diggers have just had a lot of luck with that play over the last couple of years. And because the bee diggers missed the extra point on the previous one, they're going to go here for two. All right, Rosenbrock under center. Bee diggers going for two. There's the give to the back man, and that is Randy Baker. I don't think he got in. He was the trail back. Oh, he did get in. He just got across the goal line. Two-point conversion for Randy Baker, and the Bee Diggers is good. 4.41 to go, first quarter. Brush 14, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Diggers grab a 14-0 lead, six plays, 51 yards in two minutes and 11 seconds. Randy Baker from seven yards away. Two-point conversion run by Baker was good, and too bad, Dave, what just happened there. Aaron Garcilazzo nearly kicked it into the end zone instead it went out of bounds at the three yard line yeah he's upset with himself but i agree with you that was a great kick and I'll tell you what the sterling kid had to let it roll for a long time i'm sure he was getting pretty nervous wondering if the ball was going to make it out of bounds because that's all he could hope for yeah because the big diggers would have had a chance to obviously recover there again follow us on twitter at ksir sports in case you're going to be away from a radio Turn on mobile notifications. You'll receive the scoring updates as they happen. So Sterling has the football at their own 35-yard line out of a shotgun. As Skirjanic rolls in motion to the left. There's the give off the right side to Stutzman. Breaks two tackles across the 40 to the 45. And he carries a bead digger to the 50-yard line. Randy Baker made the tackle. But Avery Stutzman with a gain of 15. And Sterling has a first down. You know, they ran that fly stuff where... You know, like the very first play of the game when Rose ran for 13 yards, it was the same kind of look, and the diggers were worried about that. You could tell our linebackers focused on that, and then they, they just ran that dive up the middle, kind of like we do when we fake that quick pitch, and then we hand it off up the middle with, a, with that trap. It was the same kind of thing. First and 10 from midfield. Randy Baker has two touchdown runs. That's 12 on the year for the beat digger senior. Out of a shotgun is James Skurjanic. Awaiting the snap. Rose again in motion to the left. Will he get the handoff? Yes, he will. Cutting it back to the middle to the 45. And he runs into another bead digger. Nearly a first down as Arnoldo Matos Garcia made the tackle. But that's a gain of nine. And the Sterling runners have done very well the first two plays of this drive. Yep. Now our defense is kind of watching what's going on, trying to figure out where the ball is. And we're just going to have to settle down and make sure we have containment on the outside and, and then read their keys. Less than four minutes to go in the opening quarter. Brush 14, Sterling nothing. Second down and one for Sterling at the Brush 41. Skurjanic awaits the snap. Again, Rose in motion to the left. Skurjanic with a five-step drop. He heaves it up the right side. There's a beat digger out there. And is it picked off? And I think it might have been. Nope, incomplete. Broken up. Looked like Cameron Alexander nearly had it. He looked like the receiver on the play as the ball was intended for D.J. Graves. But let me tell you, Alexander had incredible position on the receiver. But a smart play there for Sterling just to go up top on a second and one. Now it's third and one. Yeah, that was some Cromarty action there because he was out in front of him and, and uh, he made a play on it. I thought he actually had the ball. It's a dark corner of the end zone over there. This time Skorjanic is under center. Might do a quarterback sneak. Hard count right there, but the beat diggers didn't flinch. Third down and one from the 41. Quarterback sneak, and he's hit, but then he drives his way across the 40 to the 39. Might not have got the 39, but it looks like a first down. A gain of one for the quarterback, James Skurjanic. 
third first down of the game for the Tigers. He only made it by a half a yard. The Diggers had a pretty good surge there. We brought our linebackers up to try to fill in those, those A gaps. So from the 39. So, yeah, he did get the 39 for a couple of yards there. Now the Beat Diggers got to show up defensively. They don't want to allow points, which they didn't do last week. They didn't do against Valley either, or against Ray, I should say. From the 39 out of a shotgun handoff, Rose right side, and Joe Carwin has got him right there at the 40-yard line, throws him for a one-yard loss. And that time the B-Digger defense read it beautifully, again led by Carwin and others. It'll be second down and 11 to go for Sterling. Yeah, he did a good job of just running right past the block and kind of bear-hugged him to throw him to the ground. And isn't that slick? Now we have that depth. Seawald's over here taking a breather. He's going to be ready for offense. Carwin's out there with Soto. Man, it's nice to have that, that extra player well, in there. And if you can force Sterling to throw, that'll make the B-Diggers that much better. They've been very good on pass defense this year. Second down and 11 for the brush 40. Graves in motion. There was movement for the fifth time in the opening period. Fifth time illegal procedure called against Sterling. Now it's a second down and 16. And hey, The B-Diggers are obviously outplaying Sterling, but Sterling is doing a good job of beating themselves as well. I can't believe that. I don't know. It, I don't know if it's a silent count or what, but you know those kids were ahead of it by a, a full second. That's five penalties for 25 yards. And right now they're on pace to commit well over 100 yards in penalties just off of false starts alone. So it's second down and 16 at the brush 45. Two receivers out to the left, including Jordan Jackson. In a shotgun formation, Skurjanic looks to his left, throws. The pat is, pass is caught, breaking a tackle is Jackson. And then he's across the 40-yard line to about the 37 before Mikey Gutierrez made the play. But that's too many yards allowed by the B-Diggers if you ask the coaching staff all the way again to the 37-yard line. And a second and 16 turns into a third and about seven, a gain of nine. This will be the seventh play of the drive. The mark to make. It is about the 29-yard line. Just inside the 30 on third and seven, Skorjanic looks over towards the bench as we're about a minute 45 to go in the opening quarter. Brush 14, Sterling nothing. One setback. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Skorjanic has the football, throws it out in the right flat, partially tipped, and then the ball was dropped. Dropped over there by Brennan Skorjanic, only a sophomore. And the ball got there, even though it was partially tipped, at least from my vantage point, still hit him on the numbers. Now fourth down, what will Sterling do? Yeah, they got to go for it, but that wasn't even close to a lateral, even though the diggers were trying to dive on the ball. You know, it was definitely a forward pass, but still it's just crazy because, you know, they were up there on the line of scrimmage. They looked over to their coach. Their co coach could signal them where he wanted them to throw the ball. Well, the Tigers will go for it. Fourth and a long seven just inside the brush, 37. Trailing by two touchdowns with a minute 34 to go in the first. Skorjanic out of a shotgun. is going to roll to his right. Pressure coming. Throws off his back foot. And is the pass caught? I believe it was caught by Skorjanic. Brennan Skorjanic along the right sideline. First down for Sterling. That's at the 25-yard line. A gain of 12. And the drive continues for the Tigers. Yeah, they. you know, we had a lot of... One thing for sure, uh, Skorjanic, we gave him about a 10-yard cushion over there. Started backpedaling. He went up the field... You know, a good 15 yards, and, you know, it was just kind of a high pass. He just kind of tossed it up in the air, but we were so far away from him, we couldn't make a play on it. First and 10 for the Tigers at the B-Digger 25-yard line. Brush 14, Sterling nothing. Just picked up a critical fourth down on a 12-yard pass from one Skirjanic to the other. Under center this time, there's the pitch left to Stutzman. He's going to be hit by Baker, tries to break out of that tackle. And then other B-Diggers coming to throw him down to the turf, including Kalen Brandt. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage at the very least. As the ball will be spotted momentarily because of a slick field. They're drying the ball between plays. So for Avery Stutzman, this will be a loss of one. This will be the 10th play of the drive. Second down and 11. And the B-Digger 26-yard line could be the final play of the opening quarter with 30 seconds to go. Against Skorjanic and a shotgun. Ethan Rose is the deep back. Has the football. Rolls to his right. Brant is coming with pressure. Throws it to the left, and the pass is going to be incomplete. A diving attempt at the two-yard line. Pretty good pass there, thrown by Skorjanic. 
but it falls incomplete. That was to D.J. Graves. B-Diggers had it well defended, but nearly a perfect pass. Yeah, it was a good pass, and we had some decent coverage there, but we were a couple steps behind him, and we got to do a better job of making a break on the on the ball right when their receivers make their cuts. Well, it was a nice job of the play action by Skurjanic. He really stuck the ball in the gut of that lead running back, and some of the B-Diggers were unsure of where to go. Third down and 11 for Sterling at the brush 26-yard line. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right, one setback. That's Stutzman. Rose in motion to the right. And there's the give to Rose across the 25. And then Rosenbrock has him and throws him down to the turf at the 24 for a gain of two. And that'll be the end of the first quarter with the score. Brush 14, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran back with Dave Urich at B-Digger Stadium where Brush has a 14-0 lead over Sterling. As we head to the second quarter, Sterling's got another fourth down situation and can't take it for granted that the Bee Diggers will stop them because they just picked up a first down and a fourth and seven moments ago. Now it's a fourth and about nine. Just inside the Bee Digger 24 yard line. Got to get to the 15. And they've got two receivers split out to the left and one to the right. With Avery Stutzman as the lone setback. James Skurjanic. The Sterling quarterback out of a shotgun. Now they're resetting two receivers out to the right, so they're lining up on the short side of the field, trying to set up maybe a one-on-one situation on the left side. On fourth down, man in motion to the left, and there is a give that's going to be a double reverse. Rose is going to throw the football towards the end zone. B. Digger out there, and it's incomplete. It went through Matos Garcia's hands and nearly ended up in the hands of the Sterling receiver, but the B. Diggers did not budge on that fake and they take over on downs yeah it's a good thing maltos didn't intercept that thing or we would have had the ball on about the five now we get it clear out here on the 30 something so good for maltos being in position and sticking with him he didn't fall for the old double reverse flea flea flicker yeah that's exactly what it was so first and 10 for brush they'll mark it officially at the 24 yard line just at the 23 and a half that's the second week in a row we've seen, you know, like a reverse flea flicker. We yeah. haven't seen those kind of plays very much over no, the years. No, but you know what? When you've got a dominant team you're playing in brush, you've got to try anything you can to get on the board. First and ten, and there's the give right up the middle. Alec Peterson with a big gainer across the 30 to the 31. The tackle was made by Bacon, Colson Bacon, a freshman, to make it a junior, 6'2", 265. And from the 31, second down and three after the gain of seven by the man they call Petey. Second down and seven from the 31, or three, I should say, from the 31 after the gain of seven. Rosenbrock is back to throw, looks, throws to his right. The pass is incomplete. Intended underneath for Randy Baker. Good time for a pass, third down and three, because you st- only need three yards to pick up the first down. Yeah, he was way over the top. So Peterson's got 65 yards on two carries, and Sterling's got 66 yards offense in the first quarter. Again, you can follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports. And by following us and turning on mobile notifications, you receive scoring updates as they occur. Randy Baker has a touchdown run from one and seven yards away. 14 nothing brush, 11-14 to go second quarter. Third down and three for the Bee Diggers at their own 31-yard line. This should be a running play as Rosenbrock will send Mikey Gutierrez in motion to the left. And there is the pitch left to Peterson. He's got a first down along the left sideline of the 45. He stiff arms a man to the 30. He might go all the way. Peterson down to the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown for Alec Peterson. He made it look smooth up the left sideline. 68 yards for Peterson, and the Beat Diggers now lead by a score of 20 to nothing. And you know, I I get a chance to say his name a lot. Clay um, Shaver, he's hustling down the field, and he's the one that makes that block. He doesn't block him behind. He uses speed to get out in front of the Sterling defender and then just shield him from being able to close in on Peterson because that kid had the angle. He might have been able to knock Peterson out of bounds, but Shaver's the guy that made the touchdown happen. We'll give him 69 on the play for the 31, so 69 on the run from Peterson and not 68 as the extra point is upcoming from Javier Munoz. 
Hirschfeld puts it down. The kick is up. There was a heavy rush there, and that kick is good. 11.03 to go. Second quarter. Brush 21. Sterling nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Well, the Bee Diggers do it again. Three play, 76 yard drive, and only 50 seconds. Alec Peterson from 69 yards away. It's now a 21 to nothing game. Omar Fierro kicks it off. A low line drive. It'll be fielded at the 25 by Graves, running to his left of the 30, across the 35, and then he's going to be taken down at the 38 yard line by Randy Baker, a return of approximately 13 yards. And the Bee Diggers have scored on every drive tonight. No surprise with how efficient this offense has been. But Dave, I don't think we've said it too many times this season. Maybe Alec Peterson will be the lead runner tonight for the Bee Diggers. 134 yards on three carries, so you know that's going to be tough to beat already. Right, he had a, a 58-yarder where he nearly scored. He wasn't going to be denied that time. He <laughs> said, there's no way I'm going to be tackled at the one. And when he made an incredible cut... That stiff arm right here in front of us. Holy yeah, cow. and that was that was 45 yards away from the end zone. First and 10 for Sterling. The football's at their own 37-yard line. Under center this time is Skurjanic. He'll turn. He'll hand it off to Graves, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage at best. B-Diggers right there. To make the play, Oscar Soto was the first man in on the tackle. Second down and 10 for Sterling. You know, they're coming under center. Maybe they're starting to think about trying to keep that clock running a little bit instead of throwing the ball so often. Yeah, because that slows down the game. You're right. Second down and 10 to go for their own 37. Again, Skirchanik under center. Dave, uh, you've got something going there with that. Uh, Assessment, I think you're right. That's going to be another handoff. Left side, Graves. He's getting nowhere. Took it wide to the left. And again, Oscar Soto throws him down along with Maverick Seawalt. You get those two teaming up, you're going nowhere. Well, you know what's going to happen is it's going to force their offensive line to double team at least one of those guys, which is going to – that's something Coach Creighton talked about. and That guy's just a genius with his with – his, his defensive and overall football knowledge but you know you, you cause that double team to happen on the inside and then like he pointed out to me that frees up Rosenbrock and our linebackers don't have anybody on him and then they can make those tackles like Baker did earlier third and 10 from the 37 the B diggers have three touchdown runs two from Baker one from Peterson out of a shotgun Skurjanic is going to roll a little bit to his right he'll pump it he'll heave it up the right side and the pass is going to be caught by Rose as a B digger defender Cameron Alexander Fell down, first down for Sterling. All the way to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of 38. Yeah, that one hurt. You can bet Cameron didn't like to have that happen. He kind of got lost there, and, and uh, he fell down, and, and uh, you know, the big play happened. But, you know, what's really cool is, is uh, so he's kind of a new face out there on defense, playing a lot more at that corner. Who came over and supported him? But Peterson came over and gave him a high five and said, that's all right, buddy. Arnoldo Maltos Garcia made a big tackle. If not, it could have been a touchdown. First and 10 for Sterling at the brush 25. They've already been in brush territory in this game. The Bee Diggers held them on downs. And there's to give the Stutzman a big hole right up the middle across the 20. Rosenbrock makes the play. But he dives to about the 18-yard line. They'll give him the 19, a gain of six, second down and four for Sterling as they're threatening to get on the board. And the Bee Diggers have not given up a point since Strasburg scored a couple of weeks ago in essentially garbage time after the B-Diggers led in that game 41-6. to So now it's second and four at the 19-yard line. Brush with a 21 to nothing lead. Skurjanic again in a shotgun. Stutzman to his right. Skurjanic has the football, hands it off to Stutzman right up the middle, but Soto throws him down after maybe... A half a yard gain. It'll be third down and four to go. Seawald also got a big piece of the ball carrier. Stop, shop, and save on all your grocery needs and snacks for game time enjoyment. Brush Grocery Cart. You can also pay your public service bill and access Western Union Brush Grocery Cart, 1302 West Edison Street in Brush. Third and four for the 19. 
Well, this brush defense has been challenged more today than they were last week against Valley. That was anticipated. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Man in motion to the right. Skurjanic out of the shotgun on the option left. He'll take off of the football. He breaks it of a tackle as a first down. Looks like he's got it. The 15 of Soto brought him to the ground, but he was hit at about the 18-yard line, and he slipped out of that. It will be a gain of four. They might have to measure, but from this vantage point, he's got a first down, and that's what the officials are signaling. Rosenbrock had him by the ankle at the line of scrimmage, but it's kind of an arm tackle as Kerjanic did a good job of cutting back against the grain, and that made Kyle have to leave his feet. First and ten for Sterling at the brush 15. Seven and a half to go, second quarter. Brush 21, Sterling nothing. Again, Skurjanic is out of a shotgun. Same formation, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Stutzman is the lone setback. Graves is in motion to the right. He'll reset now, and there's the option right to Graves. Gets around the corner to the 10, and he runs into a brush bead digger at the 8-yard line, and Cameron Alexander makes the play, but then he dives to the 7, a gain of 8 for D.J. Graves, second and 2. You know, we're just giving up that, that, that corner so easy. Our defensive end... You know, we're in that four-man front, and so, you know, they're not really hooking us, but they're just keeping us occupied so well that we can't get upfield. But then our outside linebacker needs to be able to fly up to make that tackle, and they're just having a hard time shedding blocks of these receivers that are out here that are coming down on them. Well, there was a reason for that, day. We just found out it was a holding penalty. Didn't see the flag, so that eliminates the eight-yard gain there for Graves, the football being placed at the 23, so it's first down. First down and 18 to go, so no eight-yarder by D.J. Graves. Well, the beat digger's got a break there. Rush has not committed a penalty in this game, and for Sterling, that's six penalties for 33 yards. Actually, six for 35. It was marked two yards down from the field, but it's still a 10-yard penalty. Rose in motion to the left. Skurjanic on first and 18, looking over towards Rose. Looks like a one-on-one -on -one matchup. I think he's going to heave it up to Rose in the left side of the end zone. The pass is incomplete. Eddie Arriva's out there, but it was clearly a situation where Skurjanic was targeting Rose for a touchdown, and it was off target, second down and 18. Yeah, Arivas was right there. He stopped, and he, he didn't time his jump quite right. He jumped be, right, a little bit before the ball got there, and, and that caused the ball to maybe be catchable by the receiver who was behind him. But, you know, him jumping up in the air and getting his hand there must have shielded his, shielded his vision and, and distracted him enough to make him not be able to make a play on it. This will be the eighth play of the drive. Second down and 18 for Sterling at the brush 23-yard line. Skurjanic will keep the football running to the 20, back to the middle of the 15, and he's tackled close to the 10 as he kept the football in the gut of the lead back and was able to pick up 13 yards. It'll be a third down, but a, a third and short at this point, a third and about five. He had to rip the ball away from him. <laughs> You know, he put the ball in there. That kid wanted to keep it, and he just jerked it back away from him and kept it himself. Well, this is what we mentioned at the outset of the game, Dave, is that Sterling could look very good at times, but it's maintaining it for 48 minutes. That's the issue. Third and five at the brush 10, under six minutes to go, second quarter. Skurjanic, again, in the shotgun formation. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Skurjanic. Well, hand the football off to Stutzman. He's got nothing running right. Maverick Seawald had him initially, and Oscar Soto brought him down. No gain. Will Sterling attempt a field goal? I doubt it. I think they'll go for it here on fourth down and five at the brush 10, and coming up is the 10th play of the drive. Yeah, that's a long ways away if you don't have a good kicker, but you know, Sterling still, you know, they have so much motion going on. They had trips out to the left side, and and the two outside guys, they were back like slots, and then they moved their tight end back, they moved their outside guy up, and then they put their inside guy in motion, and they just have so many things going on. you got to believe that's what's leading to some of their mistakes. Oh, they're going to go for it on fourth and five from the brush 10, lining up on the right side of the field in a shotgun. Skurjanic signals Rose in motion to the left, and there is the give to Rose, and he's going to be hit in the backfield. A very simple play, Maverick Seawald. Read it perfectly, as did a couple of other bead diggers. And he threw him for about a couple of yard loss. They'll respot the football momentarily, but the bead diggers have the ball as it's turned over on downs. Let's see what the official spot is. And then that's well, a loss of three. Back to the 13 yard line. So the bead diggers have it there with 4.53 to go in the second quarter, leading 21 to nothing. 
You know, just credit Coach Creighton in that defense. You know, they're not doing a lot of fancy stuff, and they're not blitzing linebackers every play, and they're, you know, they're playing defense and making their kids read, make their reads, and so they had that misdirection there, and our kids didn't fall for it. They followed, they read the guy that they were supposed to, they read their keys, and they made the tackle. Sterling calls a timeout. Accidents or illness can strike at any time, day or night. And when they do, every second counts as a level three trauma center. Colorado Plains Medical Center can handle any type of emergency. Colorado Plains Medical Center, where expertise matters. And Willow Coffee Tea and Smoothies and G Sweets Bakery offers cookies, muffins, and sweetbreads made fresh daily. Pair with your favorite coffee, lattes, or smoothie flavors, and you're set. Open 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, Saturday 7 until 4. Stop by and see them at 921 Edison Street in Brush. Willow Coffee Tea and smoothie. So Brush has the football back with 4.53 to go. You know, Brush is a, of the philosophy, Dave, that they might want to score twice before the break. I mean, they, we've seen them do things that defy, not define, defy the odds. That's how good they've been all season, especially with a big play starting at their 13-yard line. Remember, they've had three runs this year of 80 yards or more. Yeah, and you know, Sterling, you know, with the defense that has those five guys up there on the line and then their linebackers, you don't know for sure where they're going to be. If they're blitzing people, big plays are going to happen. First and ten for the B-Diggers. At their own 13-yard line. Rosenbrock, play action, rolling left. He's got pressure, rolls out of it, throws off his back foot. Receiver is out there. That should be interference in Guzman. No, the ball was well underthrown. I think had it gotten there or close to Guzman, it might have been interference because the defender never turned around and Guzman's path was blocked towards the football. Instead, it's an incomplete pass, second down and ten. Yeah, we got lucky there because if you want to call a pass a duck, that's the one you'd want to call it because that thing was pointing straight up in the air and wobbling like crazy. It was ten yards away from anybody. Yeah, but had it been closer and Guzman could have made a play without the defender turning around. If not, it would have been intercepted. Right. Uh, you'd have to anticipate the beat diggers might actually keep this on the ground on a second down and 10 from their own 13-yard line. On the right hash mark. Rosenbrock hands it off right side to Baker, has the sideline, spins out of a tackle across the 20-yard line, and still going, and he's down just before going out of bounds. Baker with a solid gain, close to seven yards, maybe eight, as they'll... Spot the football along the far side of the field to the 20. A gain of seven, third down and three to go for the B-Diggers. So that takes them to 30 yards on four carries. And you know the Diggers are just running all over the Tigers right now. Approaching the four minutes and ten second mark. Third down and three to go for Brush at the 20-yard line. They are three for three on drive so far. Rosenbrock taking his time. Calling out the play on third down and three. There's the pitch left. Plenty of running room for Peterson. First down to the 25. Has the sideline to the 30. Still going. Following a blocker at midfield. And then he's tackled from behind. Out of bounds right at midfield. And that is a gain of 30 yards for Alec Peterson. He's approaching 200 on the night. You know what? Following the block in the Seawald over there too. And he was just really patient running right behind him. And those guys were just heading up field. It was like a machine. That was impressive. What's the yardage total, Dave? I think he's... Uh, 164. Or, wow. Yeah, 164 now. On, on a limited number of carries. On four carries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous when yeah. you're averaging uh, essentially 41 yards a carry. First and 10 for the B-Diggers at midfield, leading 21 nothing. Rosenbrock is back to throw. Looking, throws it out to his right, incomplete. Randy Baker was open underneath, but it was overthrown. Second down and 10 to go for Brush. I wonder how the footing is out there when Rosenbrock is setting up the throw. Because that obviously plays a role when you go to step with your left foot, but keeping your right foot planted at the same time. Yeah, that's tough. Well, it's you hard know, to follow through. Conditions are good. I mean, the the offensive line's pitcher. given him plenty of time. Yeah. You know, he's I mean, got plenty of time, so it's got to be something like that. Yeah, because you got to follow through in baseball, and normally your mound is pretty firm, and here, not the same footing. Second down and 10 from midfield, one setback. Rosenbrock will hand it off right up the gut to Mikey Gutierrez, and he spins across the 45. There's a late flag down at about the 43. That might be the first penalty against Brush. Avery Stutzman makes the tackle. Let's see if the play is nullified by the penalty 
because it was thrown towards a bead digger. It's going to be against Brush. It might have been at the end of the play. Well, it was near the end of the play, holding downfield. Let's see if Gutierrez is going to get the eight yards, and then it goes back to their own 48-yard line. Yeah, I think they're going to mark it, Dave, from yep. nearly the end of the... Oh, no. They're going to mark it further back. Yeah, so that... 43-yard line of brush. they got to get to the 50. It'll be second down and about 17 to go. Three and a half minutes to go. Second quarter. Brush 21. Sterling nothing. Jake Brown is the receiver to the left. He's caught a touchdown pass in each of the last two games. On second down, Rosenbrock, play action, looking to throw, sets. He said towards the right, and Brandt is out there incomplete at the 25-yard line. He was wide open with a step on the defender, but Rosenbrock's throw was too strong. Hey, he's 0 for 4 now, and just overthrowing his guys a little bit tonight. I looked over here on this side. Jake Brown was open. He was just running a fly pattern right down the sideline in front of the front of the grandstands here he was open too and brush has been known to utilize a running play to set up a shorter fourth down situation i mean like you mentioned they have really utilized the sideline well peterson's had two big runs along the sideline baker had a nice one as well so it's third down and 17 to go the B-Diggers have the football at their own 43-yard line. Rosenbrock under center is going to pitch it right to Gutierrez to the 45 at the 49-yard line. He's tackled by Stutzman. Nice play. Grabbed him around the ankles. That's the definition of a solo tackle. If not, Gutierrez would have had more. They might even give him midfield. Either way, it's going to be fourth down and just beyond 10 yards to go. A gain of seven for Mikey Gutierrez. So Mikey's up to 44 yards now on six carries. and Boy, he's just having a good night too, but... You know, if he could have, if he could have just high stepped over that ankle tackle, he would have had some upfield um, running to do. He might have been able to pick up that first down. Still, plenty of time to go in the second quarter. Two minutes and thirty-seven seconds, and it's fourth down for the bead diggers and ten to go. The ball is just shy of midfield. You have trips to the left. Rosenbrock again, back to throw, looking left. He might take off with the football, running room to the forty, along the right sideline to the thirty. Rosenbrock is going to be. Tackled out of bounds inside the 25-yard line to about the 22. That would be a gain of 28 yards, and Rosenbrock is able to pick up a first down when the entire Sterling defense was going in one direction. Rosenbrock was running in another. Yeah, we had all of our re receivers over here on the left side, and I'm not sure if that was de a designed quarterback keeper or not, but he definitely... If it, if it was a pass, he definitely looked and saw the coverage was there and just tucked it and ran. Yeah, what a great play. Yeah, that's just heads up. And if it was a pass, you know, that's awesome that he gave himself permission to do that. First and ten for the B-Diggers, just shy of the 21-yard line of the Tigers. Looking for their fourth touchdown of the game. In motion to the left is Gutierrez. Rosenbrock handoff left side to Baker to the 15-yard line, and he's still going. He's grabbed around the ankles, and he's tackled at about the 11. Very close to a first down as D.J. Graves made the hits. It's a gain of 10. Let's see if they're going to have to measure. If he didn't make the first down, he's short by a smidgen. And they will measure. With a minute 59 to go before the break. And the B-Diggers holding a 21 to nothing lead. And their fourth Patriot League game of the season. Well, now they're going to say forget about it. First down. Gain of 10 for Randy Baker, who this year has been the touchdown maker. You know, the Digger's not being fancy, just running dives, running off tackle right at him. Coming out of that T formation and just powering the football. From the 11. Three in the backfield. Rosenbrock on first down. We'll hand it off to Baker, running right side of the 10. Then he spins his way to the 8-yard line. After he was hit by Avery Stutzman, who's been in on a few plays, a gain of three. Second down and seven to go for Brush. They're taking their time. They've got all three timeouts with only a minute 15 to go. The 11th play of the drive is coming up, and, yeah, that's what you should do. Why give Sterling the ball back? Yep, especially when we're having a hard time stopping him there. 
Second down and seven to go for the Bee Diggers at the Sterling eight-yard line. Same three in the backfield. Peterson, Baker, and Gutierrez. And there's the give on the right side to Baker. He's got nothing. Stood up, and now the Bee Diggers have got to take a timeout with 51 and a half seconds to go. After the no-gainer, a rare no-gainer by Baker. That timeout brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Let the State Farm Insurance Office of Greg Mullen and Brush help you find the best policy to fit your life. Home Auto Life and Health State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call, 842-4555. That's Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. Still a very good situation for Brush here on the third and seven from the eight-yard line. I'm sure... The bead diggers would like to see a completed pass here. Kyle's had open receivers, but like you mentioned, just been overthrowing. Yep, just over four. Just, just overshooting people, putting a little too much power on it. But you know what I like about what Coach Dreitz does in these situations? He always goes out there and asks them what they think is going to work. And you know, most of the time our kids are right. Well, We've had a, good, a lot of good luck down there. Yeah, when you have belief, and when they have belief, that takes uh, a coaching staff and extends it that much more. Yep, and our co- coaches do a good job of teaching them football. They're not out there running all these tricks and, and you know, all this junk on offense and defense. They just come out and line up and play football the way you're supposed to, and so they know what's going to work out there. Well, they want to play to work now, third and seven from the eight-yard line. 51 and a half seconds to go as the B-Diggers just use their first time out. Will they stay on the ground or go to the pass? Man in motion to the left is Mikey Gutierrez. And there was movement, it looked like, on Sterling's right side. Yep, offsides against the Tigers. This makes it that much better. That football is going to be, I believe, at the four, if they mark it half the distance. Yep, at the four. So now, now you have a third down and three. Third and three from the four. Well, Gutierrez has not scored tonight. Baker has scored twice. Peterson once. And Gutierrez is in motion to the left on third down and three for the four. Hand off Baker, left side, stutter steps, takes it to the outside, and he's going to be hit at the four-yard line. He cut it inside, saw nothing, and now the bee diggers are going to let the clock roll. Fourth down and three for the four. Now they'll take a timeout. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance with 37.6 seconds to go. David looked like Baker was going to keep it on the inside. And I guess he thought through his better judgment there wasn't any daylight there. But once you take it to the outside and there's a lot of containment, you're not going to get really anything. And he was almost lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, when you're down there... Third and short, you know, third and one or third and two. You need to see if you can kind of keep your shoulder pads pointing upfield and not start running sideways. This is 1010 KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, Greeley. I'm John Beltran with Dave Urig at B Digger Stadium with 37.6 seconds to go before the break. And Brush is holding a 21 to nothing lead, and they've got a fourth down and three at the four-yard line, so they can still get a first down. Jake Brown is the receiver to the left. Nico Guzman to the right. And Rosenbrock might decide to take this himself, like that little 29-yard sprint he had last time. Brant is in motion to the right. Rosenbrock is back to throw. He'll throw it to his left. The pass is going to be... Is it caught? It is! Just inside the left pylon. Diving was Jake Brown. He's got a touchdown for the third consecutive week. Four yards away from Kyle Rosenbrock and Brush now leads 27 to nothing with 33.8 seconds to go in the opening half. Quick slant and Rosenbrock just threw it in there as low, but Brown used his athleticism and got down there and got his arms underneath the ball and just made a great catch. Yeah, that was an impressive catch. He was on the ground when he caught that ball. We were shielded from the play and we had to wait for the official to signal it. The extra point to be attempted by Javier Munoz. Perfect snap, kick is up, and the kick is inside the right upright, it's good. We'll keep it right here, with again 33.8 seconds to go. 
And that's a four-yard connection. And that drive, by the way, took four minutes and 20 seconds. And the B-Diggers started at their own 13-yard line. Had the big 30-yard run by Peterson that set that up. See some people in the bleach are starting to pick their seats up and gather their blankets and start heading for the house already. Well, Dave, I guess you can't blame them. No, it's got to be cold out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're in a much more luxurious position. Sterling's got about 50 fans over there. Maybe a few more. they got some kids back there playing smear the qu the quarterback over there behind their stands. But they don't have a lot of people here. The diggers, you know, we're you know, it's nothing like, like we've seen. There's basically nothing here on the north side of the stands and, you know, not very many kids over here on the south side. Garcilazo kicks it off, fielded by Graves at the 20, running to his left at the 25, and then he's going to be tackled by Clay Shaver at the 26-yard line. Excellent open field tackle by the B-Digger sophomore, Clay Shaver, and Sterling will have maybe a, a shot or two to try to do something here on offense with 28.2 seconds to go. And the football at their own 26-yard line as Brush leads by a score of 28 to nothing here in the second quarter. Shaver just finds a way to be around the ball. Yeah, he does have a knack for it. There's no question about it. First down and 10 for Sterling. Skorjanic out of a shotgun. We'll hand it off on the right side, and that is Graves across the 30-yard line to the 31. Soto made the tackle. It's a gain of five. And I don't think they're in a hurry to get off another play. Seawall just got smashed over there. They double-teamed him and just covered him up. Well, they're up to the line of scrimmage. Two seconds to go, one, and they get the playoffs. Skirjanic will hand it off right up the middle, and that's a gain of about three. Let's see, that's somebody off the bench who just got it for Sterling. And that ball carrier for Sterling is Ethan Walliver, a senior, gains three. The play is made by the Bee Diggers on defense. That's the end of the opening half with a score. Brush 28, Sterling nothing. This is 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran and Dave Urich back from Bee Diggers Stadium where the Bee Diggers will receive the second half kickoff. And Brush with a 28 to nothing lead over the Sterling Tigers. Sterling with two possessions that were very effective. Double-digit possessions, but... Brush made the plays that they had to make in order to keep Sterling out of the end zone while the B-Diggers did capitalize even when they were down to their own 13-yard line on that final drive. And talk about managing time. That's another sign of a mature football team, Dave. When you manage the time so well, you score and you don't allow the other team to counterpunch. Yeah, that was, that was pretty awesome clock management. The Diggers for sure didn't want to give it back to Sterling because we couldn't stop them. We were having a hard time the last two series. And Sterling basically shut themselves down, you know, with their penalties and and then just maybe some poor play calling. All right, so the Bee Diggers have made their way on the field. And yeah, let's see who they'll send deep. Yeah, it looks like Arnoldo Maltos Garcia and... Mikey Gutierrez, Randy Baker usually goes back there, but he's setting up at about the 27-yard line. We'll see Sterling kick off for the first time tonight. Yeah, Dave, we'll have to go through the archives and see the last time the B-Diggers punted this year. Yeah, you said that earlier. I started thinking, I don't know when we punted. Well, the logical time would have been to punt against Strasburg when they had that third and seven at their own right. uh, 21 yard line. But Coach Dreitz mentioned that because Strasburg punted earlier in that game and it was only a, a four yard punt and the wind was blowing against Strasburg in that direction. The B Diggers were going in the same direction Strasburg was when they had a four yard punt. That was his uh, logic, so it made sense. But I don't think they punted against Strasburg either as 
Kicking off here to begin the second half of the Sterling Tigers will be Chris Bartow, a sophomore. And it is Maltos Garcia at his own 10-yard line who will receive. And he's gotten a lot more playing time during the last few games. And this ball is going to be squibbed, and the ball is loose, and the bee diggers fall on it at the 48-yard line. Excellent aggressive play by Brush. And falling on that football was one of the up men. That's Wyatt Coleman. Well, that's a good idea to let a running back fall on that because they've always got sure hands. But Dave, now the P Diggers are only 52 yards away from the end zone. Yeah, I'm surprised that Sterling went with that onside kick there. Uh, one of our middle up up man, I couldn't tell who it was. He went up there and he kind of avoided it to make sure it, it went 10 yards first. And he actually could have caught it on the high point of the bounce. Maybe had a little easier play. One setback for the B diggers. First and 10 at their own 48-yard line. There's the give to Gutierrez. And he bowls his way across the 50 to about the 49-yard line. Colson Bacon made the tackle a gain of three. Second down and seven to go for Brush. 47 yards. Seven carries. The diggers come out just running those dives, running straight ahead and just trying to tenderize the middle of that Sterling defense. That is my favorite verb that you use, tenderize, because that's normally what happens. The tenderize is just that's a Dave Urich term more than a national football term. <laughs> Second down and seven for the Sterling 49. Peterson is in motion to the right. Over 160 yards in the opening half. Rosenbrock to throw, looking on the right flat. Pressure coming backside, throws on the run, wide open pass is dropped by Peterson. An excellent pass along the right sideline at the 33-yard line. I think he tried to run with the ball before he caught it. It'll be third down and seven to go. Credit Rosenbrock for an excellent play. Yeah, it was probably one of the best passes I've seen thrown in brush for a long time. They were actually wanting to throw it to Peterson out there on a flare. They flared him out of the backfield over in front of the Sterling bench. And... Uh, the Sterling linebacker flew up there and had some really good coverage there. So Rosenbrock just hung out a little bit longer, and Peterson just turned it upfield, and that's when he broke into the clear. Peterson might have jammed a finger. He's out of the game right now. Third down and seven from the Sterling 49-yard line. Rosenbrock on the give to the trail back. That's Baker. He does not have a first down, but he's across the 45 to the 44. It's a gain of about five, fourth down, and a long two to go for Brush. So we'll see what we do. You know, are we going to punt the ball here or put them deep in their own territory or go for it? Yeah, the Bay Diggers will definitely go for it here, but they've got to get uh, close to three yards. So mark it just shy of the 44-yard uh, line. Even if they don't get a first down, they'll still be on Sterling's side of the field. Baker and Gutierrez in the backfield, fourth down and a long two to go. From the 44, man in motion to the left, and there was movement by Randy Baker. He was way out in front. Yep, we had the Sterling defensive line jumping, too. They were coming across, and they purposefully were going forward on two just to see if they could get the first down easy, and, and they had him. Sterling did jump, but we already had a guy in motion, so Baker couldn't even continue that motion and, and tried to hide the mistake. Now the football just shy of the 49, and it's fourth down and seven. Well, not automatically a passing situation. One receiver out to the right. On fourth and seven, Rosenbrock, play action, rolling to his right, looking to throw off his back foot. The pass is complete to Brown, first down along the sideline. He breaks free at the 25-yard line, then he's out of bounds. Wow, what a throw and catch there from Rosenbrock to Brown, and the beat diggers have a first down. As the drive continues, well, apparently he got out of bounds well before the 20. It was uh, at the 30, but it's still a gain of 19 for Brush. Well, he really turned on the afterburners after he made the catch. He was running that line sideline so hard like a tightrope, he actually kind of veered out of bounds. But you saw that, Dave. He caught it with his hands. He didn't let that ball get into his chest, and that was a key to that reception. First and 10 for Brush. At the Sterling 30-yard line, 9.59 to go, third quarter. Brush leading Sterling 28 to nothing. Along the right hash mark. Man in motion to the left, that's Nico Guzman. 
Rosenbrock on the counter left, and there's a hole for Mikey Gutierrez. They try to strip the ball. He's got a first down as he storms his way across the 25 to the 20-yard line. An impressive run for Mikey Gutierrez, a gain of 10. Yeah, so that takes him up to 58 yards now on eight carries. And he ran half of that run was backwards. But again, running right there <laughs> behind the blocking of, of uh, Kalen Brandt, Seawald, and, and uh, Joe Carwin. First and 10 for the B-Diggers inside the Sterling 20. Looking to make it 5-for-5 five five on possessions tonight. With 9.39 to go third quarter, Brown is the receiver to the right. Gutierrez and Baker in the backfield. Rosenbrock up to the line of scrimmage. On first down, Kyle turns, hands it off Baker right up the middle, but he runs into a pile of Tigers all over the play. Maybe a gain of a couple as the first hit was made by P.J. Holtzhauser, a sophomore at six foot two oh five. We'll call it second down and eight to go for the 18. Yeah, they're trying to run that trap right up the middle, but Sterling's got that nose guard in there and Made it kind of tough when they snuck their linebacker up there close. Well, and teams have taken chances defensively on brush, and sometimes they pay off, and other times it goes a long way in favor of the bead diggers. Second down and eight to go for the 18-yard line. Brown again, the receiver to the right. The backs are split. Rosenbrock will hand it off on the counter. Left side to Gutierrez. Tries to leap over a defender who held on to the ankle of Mikey. And making the tackle after the gain of three was Jake Busmenta, the sophomore. Third down and five from the 15. He might have gone all the way, Dave, if not for that ankle tackle. Yeah, and I thought he was going to break it there for a minute because he was hopping and jerking his leg out of there, and then he'd hop again and jerk his leg. He just couldn't quite free it up. So from the 15, third down and five, the B-Diggers have held the football for nearly four minutes. And that was basically how long they took to score in their previous possession. From the 15, on third and five for Brush. Rosenbrock on the bootleg right, holds it on his right hip. He's across the 15 to the 10, along the sideline to the 5. Rosenbrock scores! A touchdown for Kyle Rosenbrock. 15 yards away for the junior quarterback. And Brush now leads 34 to nothing. 43 yards now for Rosenbrock on two carries. and It's been a while since we've seen him run that bootleg, and I'm sure he's he's glad to be able to get that out again. Running behind some good blocking over there on the right side, Jose Rodriguez and, and Jacob Nichols are the guard and tackle over there, and Tristan Teeter doing a good job at that center position. And here comes the uh, extra point momentarily from Javier Munoz. You know, Dave, you talk about Kyle and everything. It's like matter of fact because almost makes it look automatic. The kick by Munoz is very high, and it is very good. 7.51 to go, third quarter. Brush 35, Sterling nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. DJ Graves falls down after fielding the kickoff at about the 12-yard line. He just slipped off that boot by Omar Fierro, and Sterling now with bad field position. For the Bead Diggers, an eight play, 52 yard drive in four minutes and eight seconds. Kyle Rosenbrock runs it in from 15 yards out. PAT was good. 35 to nothing is now the score. And the official mark is the 13 yard line for the Tigers. And that's too bad, Dave, because they don't need any more mishaps in this particular game. But the Bead Diggers will take it. And let's see, did Sterling wow. just call a timeout? Yeah, they did. Wow. Yeah, we'll keep it right here. That hurts. You know, if, if you're a Sterling fan, that would hurt. You know, you, you know, you just got done talking about your offense and what you were going to do during the halftime. And granted, you know, your defense was on the field for a while. But you, you'd expect your kids to be ready to go. Well, and that's the thing. How does that happen? You know, you... <laughs> You're on defense all the time, as you mentioned. I don't know how that happens. It's been very odd. The Sterling offense has looked pretty good at times today, and yet at others you wonder why all the false starts. Now the timeout, even before the first play, that they're running from scrimmage in the second half. But I guess that equals a 3-3 three and three record. The inconsistency. That's why you win some and you lose some. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 13-yard line. A brief timeout. 
James Skurjanic, the quarterback, is under center with two setbacks. On first down, Skurjanic on the pitch left to Ethan Rose. Randy Baker nearly had him. He runs by him, but it's still going to be a loss because so many other beat diggers are in the backfield to throw him for a one-yard loss back to the 12. It'll be second down and 11, and Oscar Soto, one of many brush beat diggers in on the play. Yeah, I could tell Baker was pretty upset that he missed that tackle, but he's got to learn to shake that off because the officials hadn't blown the whistle yet, and the other diggers hadn't quite taken the kid down to the ground yet. So he could have got back up and jumped over there and piled on and helped finish that tackle off. You know, maybe that kid could have broke the tackle and headed down the field. Second down and 11 to go. Football at the 12-yard line. Skurjanic again is under center. And this will be a pitch right to Ethan Rose. He wants to throw the football, and he's trying to escape pressure. He's going to throw the football down the field, and it's going to be caught! Holy Mahungas caught at the 37. A gain of 25 yards and a first down. Jordan Jackson makes the catch. Alec Peterson makes the tackle. Yeah, just a halfback pass. And you know, I thought we were going to have that kid there in the end zone, but again, you know, you know, in the slippery conditions, sometimes the kids have to leave their feet and they kind of dive and reach out and arm tackle people and they can't make cuts like they'd like to. But boy, that ball fluttered forever up there in the air. Yeah, so Ethan Rose was the uh, the one who threw it and Jordan Jackson caught it. First and 10 from the 37 yard line in a shotgun formation. This time is Skurjanic. DJ Graves in motion to the left. He'll get the handoff looking for daylight. Tries to slip out of a tackle still on his feet, but he gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard to the 38. That's about it. Too many bead diggers there. And they're all getting up from the bottom of the pile. As it'll be second down. And they'll give them a yard. Second and nine. And it's a short yard at that. Yeah, the diggers did a good job of holding them there. Our defensive line's really been doing the job of getting upfield on these Tigers. And, you know, you don't see a lot of our, our line backing up and Boy, that sure does make life easier for the linebackers. Under six minutes to go, third quarter. Brush 35, Sterling nothing. On second down and nine for the 38-yard line. Man in motion, handoff to Stutzman up the middle. First down to the 45, still on his feet, and he's tackled from behind at the 49-yard line of Brush by Clay Shaver, an impressive run of 13 yards by Stutzman. Yeah, that was definitely a good run and sort of a trap play there on the inside. You could see the hole just open up, and he had to kind of run sideways once he got through the hole. Your one-stop center for home improvement projects is Ackley Building Center, 1402 Mill Street and Brush. Your one-stop shop for flooring, paint, tools, appliances, and more. Ackley Building Center on the other side of the 50, first and 10 for Sterling. Skurjanic and a shotgun, deep drop, looking, throwing to his left. The pass is incomplete, out of bounds off the right hand of Ethan Rose, defended by Randy Baker. Second down and 10, and Mr. D's Ace Farm and Home Center for all your farm and ranch supplies, including Purina Feeds and everything. Stop by any of the Ace stores in Fort Morgan, Sterling, and their newest location, 122 Custer Street in Brush. Mr. D's Ace Farm and Home Center. Second down and 10, just beyond the 50-yard line. Brush 35, Sterling nothing, 5.25 to go, third quarter, Skurjanic shotgun out in the right flat, caught by Graves, gets by defender to the 45-yard line, then he slips to the 44, it's a gain of six, tackle credited to Junior Cookie Barraza, third and four to go for the Tigers. So that takes him up to 101 yards passing, completing six out of 13 attempts. Third and four from the 44 brush. Four down territory for Sterling more than likely unless they lose a lot of yardage on this play. Skurjanic awaits the snap. Has the football back to throw. Over the middle of the pass is incomplete. Defended over there by a couple of bead diggers including Matos Garcia intended for Jake Fusmente but thrown out in front of him. Fourth down and four and if they don't get the first down here. The bait diggers will have very good field position once again. Maltos could have lit him up from his free safety position yeah. there. That was the kind of play they run that post pattern, and the kid's looking at the ball, and Maltos flew in there and 
I bet if he could have that opportunity again, he would have put a shoulder pad on his solar plexus. Yep, fourth down and four from the 44 brush. Skurjanic looking over towards the sideline for play instructions. He's five yards back of the center in that shotgun formation. Now looking to his right as Sterling resets. Man in motion to the left. There's the pass out in the left flat caught by Jackson. Slips out of a tackle. First down inside the 35. And then Baker takes him down at the 30. But not before a gain of 14 and a Tiger first down. Yep, just poor tackling. But also some you got to give Sterling uh, some credit because they got some good downfield blocking. And Jordan Jackson with a gain of 14 as the drive continues for the Tigers at the B-Digger 30. 4.33 to go, third quarter. The B-Diggers lead the Tigers 35 to nothing. Shotgun Serjanic uh, right flat, incomplete, tipped at the line of scrimmage as Serjanic was trying to throw that pass to Graves, and Brandt knocked it away. Second down and 10. Some good upfield play there by Brandt. Boy, he does a good job coming from his defensive end position and applying that pressure. He's got those big, long arms. You know, he can grab a hold of those, those linemen that are trying to block him, and he can keep them away from his body. Second down and 10 to go for Sterling at the brush 30-yard line. Receivers out to the left and just one to the right. Stutzman is the lone setback. Graves in motion to the right, and it'll be a quarterback keeper. Big hole up the middle. For James Skurjanic, he's across the 25 to the 22. Picked up close to eight yards before Kalen Brandt made the tackle. Third down and two to go for Sterling. So he's got 24 yards on three carries. and They're starting to pick us apart a little bit as the kids are trying to figure out, you know, are they going to throw it? Or are they going to run it? They got us on our heels. Well, three consecutive double-digit drives. This will be the 11th play. Third and two from the 22. Skurjanic, two-step drop, looking left, throwing left. The pass is incomplete. Ethan Rose went one way. The ball went behind him. Fourth down. I'm surprised they threw the football there. I am, too. They're, you know, they're having luck running the ball. The beat diggers have been bending the last three drives but have not been broken. Now on fourth down and a long two, just shy of the 22. Sterling will go for it. They've converted multiple fourth downs in this game. Skurjanic again out of a shotgun with Avery Stutzman to his right. Two receivers out to the right. One to the left on fourth and two. Graves is in motion to the left. Now will reset in the backfield. Skurjanic will hand it off to Graves running right and he's got a first down inside the 20 to the 19. Barraza made the tackle. He needed two. He got four. Yeah, it was just kind of a slingshot sort of play. You know, they handed the ball off, and there's a little bit of misdirection. You, you weren't sure if Skurjanic didn't keep it, so they were able to freeze our linebacker on the far side. But then once the Graves kid got the ball, he was he was quick hitting the hole. Yeah, that's the second fourth down conversion on this drive for Sterling. First and ten from the B digger 18 yard line. Out of a shotgun, Skurjanic will hand it off on the right side to Stutzman. Cuts it back towards the middle. He's going to get three yards to the 15-yard line before he's taken down by a bevy of bead diggers. Second down and seven, and upcoming is going to be the 14th play of the drive. And Sterling has held the football for four and a half minutes, and they're still going. Yep, 26 yards now for Stutzman. Well, this is making for a very fast third quarter. So second down and seven to go from the 15-yard line. Under three minutes to go in the third. Skurjanic awaits the snap, has the football. He will keep it up the middle, but reading it beautifully was Kyle Rosenbrock. Or check that, he's out of the game defensively. I saw four, that was Clay Shaver. Yeah, Rosenbrock's on the sideline, a gain of two. Yeah, Rosenbrock hasn't played on defense in a while in this game. So Third down and five to go from the 13-yard line. He did do a good job of flying in there from his defensive end position and, and making that sure tackle. Well, four down territory again. And where Sterling has flourished has been on fourth down. But right now it's third and five for the B-Digger 13-yard line. Shotgun Skurjanic 
a fade up the left side. That is going to be intercepted in the end zone by Arrivas, who somehow decided to take it out, and he's tackled at about the three. He didn't think he was going to be tackled, I think, from behind. So nice play by Arrivas, but not a very smart decision thereafter. I think he thought he had daylight, so I guess you can't uh, blame him too much for wanting to take it out, but the bee diggers are backed up at about the uh, two to three yard line after the interception, the bee diggers force a turnover. Well, he's got some speed. You know, he probably figured he could run away with it a little bit. But you know, you're also looking up in the air at the ball, and you come down with it. You're not sure where you're at. He might have thought he was on the one too. And Arivas just waited for that football. By the way, it was a poor throw by Skrjanic. So first and ten for the bee diggers at their own three yard line. And Rosenbrock is still in at quarterback. How about a 97-yard run? I don't see that coming. They've had some long runs, but if they pull that off, there is the give. And a flag is down. That is Mikey Gutierrez, I believe. No, that should be Peterson. Up the right side. He's to the 10, but let's see what the flag is all about. It was thrown very quickly. This will be a legal procedure against Brush. Well, or legal formation either way. Now the ball is going to be placed at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. So it's very short in terms of penalty yardage. Dave, we're looking at that football at the one-yard line. So first down and about 12 to go for Brush. You can't go any further than 99. That's what the bait diggers will try to pull off here. Up 35 to nothing with a minute 59 to go. In the third quarter. In the backfield are Gutierrez and Peterson. Along with Baker. On first and 12. There's the give on the right side. And across the five yard line to the six, maybe the seven. Along the far sideline is Randy Baker. When you give it to Baker because it's hard to bring him down even for a loss. He runs so hard. He's able to pick up six yards. So now all of a sudden a very manageable second down and about six. Yeah, he did a really good job running over there on that right side. He just, as more Sterling kids were jumping on his back, he just kept veering more and more towards the, the sideline. Second down and six to go from the seven. The diggers have a couple of plays left in this quarter, more than likely. Man in motion to the left is Gutierrez. Rosenbrock will give it on the left side to Baker. Speed to the outside of the 10. He's to the 15, then tackled at about the 17-yard line. But Baker only needed six to get a first down. Instead, he gains 10 yards for the Brushby Diggers. Yeah, just that sort of that fullback sweep that they like to run and just having a lot of success with it. So first and 10 for Brush at their own 17-yard line. With 54.4 seconds to go in the third. B-Diggers led at the break 28-0. It's now 35-0. And the clock has just restarted. Up to the line of scrimmage of the 17. One set back for Brush. That's Mikey Gutierrez. Back to throw is Rosenbrock. Up the middle. Wide open is Baker. Baker to the 40. He's got one defender to beat to the 50. Baker to the 30. Baker down to the 20. Running hard to the 10. To the 5. Baker is tackled in the end zone. Touchdown for the Beat Diggers. Holy Mahungus. That one just went 83 yards. And the Beat Diggers lead 41 to nothing. The coaches just saw Sterling shifting their free safety over to one side. They just run that dump over the middle. They fake the dive, and Baker just runs right up the middle of the field. And holy cow, there was nobody even close. And you got a Pat Peterson on the back. He was in a position where he might have been able to block in the back or you know make a, a stupid play there, but he didn't. You know, he just kept his hand out there. He, and then when he saw that Baker was going to make it, he went ahead and took himself out of the action and just let Randy finish it up. Well, you've gone to a running clock. And are they going to attempt the extra point on the other end? I guess they will with a running clock. Uh, I would think you've got to kick it on the same side. Yep. So 106 yards passing for Rosenbrock. He's completed, you know, just two pa or three passes. But holy cow, man, that one was a big one. 
Dave, he was so open. That was ridiculous. Yeah, that was incredible how open he was on that play. But the, like we said before, that's what's going to happen when you start taking chances and moving people around and putting your guys out of position. That's half the battle is just putting your kids in the position where they, they can be to have some success. The extra point to be attempted by Javier Munoz. The snap is there. The kick is up. And that one is off to the left. Under a running clock at the end of the third quarter. Brush 41, Sterling nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Three plays for the Bee Diggers. 97 yards and 83-yard pass middle and Randy Baker did most of the running there from Kyle Rosenbrock so Baker's third touchdown of the game and Rosenbrock's second touchdown pass of the game extra point no good beat diggers lead 41 to nothing so we'll be under a running clock as soon as this fourth quarter commences Aaron Garcilazzo to kick it off for the beat diggers and this is the fourth time this year a short kick Fielded at the 30-yard line, across the 40 to the 45, and then barreling into B-Diggers at the 49-yard line is Darren Sanders, and that's where the Tigers will begin on what could be their final drive of the game, whether they score or not because of the running clock here. So this will be an exact 12-minute quarter unless there's a timeout called or an injury on the field. Football officially at the 50-yard line for Sterling. But, Dave, we talked about this at halftime. You know the B-Diggers do not want to allow points here. No, they have that pride at stake. They're, and they have a lot of their number one guys out there. I see, But I see Cookie Barraza still playing in there at the middle linebacker position. Clay Shavers playing a defensive end position. First and ten at midfield. In a shotgun formation. There's the handoff to Stutzman up the middle. And he's got about three yards to the 47. For he's tackled by Barraza. Michael Mitchek, a sophomore, is now the quarterback. So they've got their second-string quarterback in there for Sterling. Which I, I think is a good idea, Dave. You you build it a little bit. Skurjanic is a junior, but he's had enough playing time tonight, and I'm sure he'd like a rest and see what Mitchek can do. Yeah, you know what? Coaches on our side are reciprocating. We just threw Aaron Williams out there, number 34. We're starting to put some of our junior varsity guys in the game as well. Second and seven shy of the 47. And there's a fumble, and the ball is loose, but it's pounced upon by the quarterback, Mitchek. It was mishandled by Ethan Walliver, but it's back in Sterling territory at the 47, so a loss of five. Now it's third down and about 13 to go. Well, no, they're going to put it back at the 48. Either way, a loss of about four, but it's fourth down or third down, I should say, in 12. Running clock with 9.57 to go in the game. Brush 41, Sterling nothing. Jose Rodriguez is getting some defensive time out there. I bet he's loving that. He mostly plays offense all the time. Yeah, so he wants to tackle somebody. Yeah. Fourth and 12, or third and 12, I don't know, I said fourth down. A rolling right is Mitchek looking to throw, still looking. He's going to take off of the football at the 50-yard line. Gets out of a tackle, still on his feet. He's got a first down. He was shirt-tailed at the 45, but he kept going. He gets into B-Digger territory at the 37-yard line. An impressive gain of 15 yards for Michael Mitchek. And then that was Jose Rodriguez that caught him from behind. So he is hungry to, to make a few tackles out there. Well, the Tigers are hungry to get into that end zone as we still have well over nine minutes to go in the game. First and ten for Sterling at the brush 37-yard line. In a shotgun formation is Mitchek. In motion to the left is Rose. Handoff Stutzman right side cuts it back to the middle. He's got running room, and he's still going all the way down inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. The B-Diggers nowhere to be found until that point. It's a gain of 17 and a first down. Another one for Sterling on this drive. That was a nice run that he had right there. He had to make a couple of cuts. Diggers just making a few bad choices, leaving our feet, trying to dive and make tackles. And He makes the cut, and we miss him completely or miss him with an arm tackle. At the 20-yard line of brush and a shotgun is Mitchek. First and 10. Mitchek this time will hand it off to Stutzman running right and then he runs into a couple of beat diggers at the 16-yard line. A gain of four. And 
Getting up for brushes, Arnoldo Matos Garcia. He had the big hit. Second down and six to go for Sterling after the four-yard gain by Stutzman. Northeast Colorado's locally owned hometown savings and loan with locations in Fort Morgan and Brush, Equitable Savings and Loan. They have financial solutions for you out of a shotgun. Second down and six for the B-Diggers 16-yard line. Man in motion, Mitchick hands off to Stutzman, cutting it back towards the middle, across the 15 to about the 12. Might have got the 11. As the ball's going to be spotted momentarily. Yeah, they'll put it at the 12, a gain of four. Third and two to go with 7.25 remaining in the game. Hometown service in a higher plane, High Plains Bank in Wiggins, 502 Central Avenue. For assistance in opening a loan, equity line of credit, or checking account. Third down and two at the 12. Handoff, throws right side, the ball is fumbled, and it's still loose. And I think the beat diggers fell on it at the 10. They did. Holy mahungus. The beat diggers maintain that streak of not allowing a point. Tristan Volk shot in there from his linebacker position, and he got so much penetration, he reached out there with his left arm and tried to arm tackle the kid, and in the process, stripped the ball out of there. Omar Fierro recovered the fumble, so Brush has it at their own 10-yard line with a clock running with 6.35 to go in the game. Arnoldo Matos Garcia is the quarterback for the remainder of the game. Dave, whatever it takes, you got to make that play, and the Beat Diggers made the play. As you mentioned, there was a strip there, because Ethan Rose has played the whole game for Sterling. That's not a rookie out there. Now the Beat Diggers on a first and ten. I see Aaron Williams back there. He's got the carry running hard along the left sideline across the 15. He's still going a first down across the 20 towards the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. Wow, man, Williams was shot out of a cannon. He's going to be 15 yards. Yeah, he's got some power, too. So, you know, Sterling, I noticed they were blitzing their nose guard and their inside linebacker there, and they kind of blew our, our center and our guards back a little bit. And They were down there around our ankles, and they paid the price for it because they committed those guys too far inside. Conrad Cole is in that backfield as well. First and 10 at the 25-yard line, and there's the pitch right to Cole, running room to the outside, across the 30-yard line, he breaks free at the 40, Cole up the right sideline to the 50, still going, and he's going to be dragged down from behind inside the 40, to about the 37-yard line, a gain of 38 for Conrad Cole, and a B-Digger first down. He would have been off to the races, but he had to stop for a minute and wait for his blockers to get out of his way, because he got out there so fast. But, boy, he's got a lot of speed. And Sterling, again, paying the price. They put six guys up there at the line of scrimmage. They're trying to use their guys to blow our, our junior varsity linemen off the, off the ball and maybe hopefully get the ball back, and they paid the price for that. The ball just inside the Sterling 38-yard line with 4.45 to go in the game. Brush 41, Sterling nothing. Man in motion to the left is Rojas. Handoff, Williams, left side, stumbles, still on his feet, to the 30-yard line, and close to a first down. Aaron Williams running with reckless abandon at about the 30. Might have gotten to the 29. You're right, he's strong, he's powerful, he runs hard, and it's a gain of nine for Aaron Williams. Yep, you got to do that, you know. you got to do it. When it's your chance, you better shine, and he's doing it. No, well, Dave, I don't think Sterling's going to get the ball back in this game. So second down and one to go from the 29-yard line. As we approach the four-minute mark. And they've only run three plays on this drive, but they've taken them a long way. In fact, that last run by Williams was the shortest run of this drive. On second down and one from the 29, Arnoldo Maltos Garcia lets the play clock expire. I don't think that was his intention. That just happened to be the case. So the Bay Diggers go five yards backwards still under a running clock they don't stop the clock even for a penalty so now it's second down and six to go for brush at the 34 yard line of sterling that was a pretty quick delay game that was wasn't it yeah i'm just gonna say I, I didn't see where he got up to the line of scrimmage and the rest of the team that late it's the 12th man yeah you're right 
Maybe the weather is now playing a factor where you just want to get out of here. Some of the bead diggers on the sidelines have their jackets on from the 34. And the ball is loose in the backfield, still loose. And the bead diggers somehow fall on it at the 41-yard line. Excellent play by Cookie Barraza as the ball was mishandled, I think, by Williams. It's going to end up being a loss of seven yards. And maybe Sterling will get the ball back because now it's third down for Brush. They've got to get to the 28-yard line. It's third and 13. There was a lot of confusion there. We had running backs running right and quarterbacks running left. and I don't know if anybody knew where they were supposed to be. From the Sterling 41-yard line, leading by 41, third and 13. Diego Rojas in motion to the left. And there's the handoff for Victor Rojas to Conrad Cole running hard up the middle. That's Edgar Rojas who was in motion and across the 40 to the 36, a gain of five. And it'll be fourth down. It's Michael Mitchek did make the tackle for Sterling. So fourth down and eight to go from the 36. The bead diggers will run one more play if they don't get a first down. Sterling will get the ball back with maybe a chance for two plays because once this play is run by the bead diggers, they'll be under two minutes to go in the game. So fourth down. And eight to go from the 36. Matos Garcia on the bootleg left, looking for a block, cannot get around a defender. He's thrown for a big loss by Peyton Cloberdance at the 43-yard line, lost seven yards in the play. And Sterling has the football back. Are they going to try and stop the clock and maybe try to get on the board? Beat diggers are hoping not. It looks like they've only got a couple of plays left because the offense is not yet out on the field for Sterling. They're huddling towards the sideline. And I think the Tigers did call a timeout. They did call a timeout with a minute 22 to go. So we'll keep it right here with Brush holding that 41 to nothing lead just past the top of the hour. This is 10-10 KSIR. Brush, Fort Morgan, Ray. I'm John Beltran with Dave Urig. Tigers want to get on the board. The Beat Diggers haven't given up a point in a couple of games. And that first team defense has been pitching a shutout for a while. Now you got second teamers out there. And Dave, amazing. You played seven games this year. You're the bead diggers, and four of these games have gone to a running clock and nearly a fifth against Strasburg. That's exciting, but sometimes it's not always good because, you know, it's like you got to have that one nail biter that you had to realize that it took some guts and gas to. To win the game. Oh, and that game could come during the playoffs. So here we go. First down and 10 for Sterling at the 43-yard line. Mitchak back to throw over the middle. The pass is going to be incomplete. In fact, it was almost intercepted over there by Edgar Rojas. Second down and 10. Clock continues to run. If Sterling does not call a play, they'll have two plays remaining. As we are under one minute to go. They won't be able to run a third play, I don't think. From the 43-yard line, the Bee Diggers lead by 41. Out of a shotgun is Michael Mitchek awaiting the snap. Has the football. He's going to roll to his right. He tries to get around a Bee Digger and does to the 45-yard line. And then he's tackled at the 47, a gain of four. And... Raymond Miller made the tackle for the Bee Diggers. Third down and six to go after the gain of four for Sterling. This will be the final play because they're up to the line of scrimmage with only 20 seconds to go unless a timeout is called before the clock expires. On third down and six to go from the 47. Mitchek is going to hand it off on the left side, and that's going to be a first down uh, across the 50 to the 47. And that will be a gain of six, and that ball carrier was Mike Chavez, and that is the end of the game. The Bee Diggers have defeated the Sterling Tigers tonight, 41 to nothing. We'll come back with a recap on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran, Dave Urich, back from Bee Digger Stadium as we welcome you to the Bee Digger Post Game Show. Bee Digger Post Game Show is brought to you by Buildings by Design. Knowing who you can trust to do a good job is a tough part nowadays. But when you hire buildings by design, you can trust you'll get the building you want when you want it. And at the quality you deserve, start your build project right. Start with buildings by design as the Bee Diggers win the game tonight over the Sterling Tigers. 
by a score of 41 to nothing. Let's go through the scoring for the Bee Diggers because they did it often and early. They did not punt tonight, and that has been a trend here in recent games. Brush's first drive. Three plays, 60 yards in a minute three. Randy Baker scores from a yard out. PAT was no good. It was 6 nothing on Brush's second drive. Six plays, 51 yards in two minutes and 11 seconds. Baker scores from seven yards away. Two-point conversion run by Baker was good. It was 14 nothing. Strasburg then went out after 12 plays. The bead diggers did bend a little bit but didn't break. And then Brush came back, a 69-yard run by Alec Peterson, finishing off a three-play 76-yard drive in less than a minute. PAT was good. It was 21 nothing right before the break. A 13-play, 87-yard drive in four minutes and 20 seconds. Jake Brown with a four-yard touchdown catch off a pass thrown by Kyle Rosenbrock, 28 to nothing after the PAT was good. On the first drive, the second half in that drive, Rosenbrock scores from 15 yards out on the eighth play, 52 yards in a drive, four minutes and eight seconds. It was 35 to nothing, and then Sterling ran 15 plays on their subsequent drive, but Eddie Arebus picked the ball off in the end zone. Bee Diggers took over and needed just three plays to go 97 yards, an 83-yard pass from Rosenbrock to Baker. Closed out the scoring not only in the third quarter in the game. Rush wins 41 nothing. They move to 4-0 in Patriot League play, 7-0 overall. Sterling falls to 2-3 and in league play, 3-4 and in the year. Dave, let's go through the individual numbers, starting with the Bee Diggers. You know what? Rush did have a good offensive night. 495 yards um, offense, 389 of that on the on the ground, 106 in the air. Rosenbrock completed 3 of 8 passes, uh, 2 to Jake Brown. Uh, Jake had one for four yards, another 19-yarder for 23-yard total, and then Baker had that 80, that 81 dump for 83 yards right down the middle of the yeah. field. Rosenbrock also ran the ball twice for uh, 43 yards. Maltos had one carry for a negative seven. Uh, Conrad Cole came in 43 yards on two carries. Williams had three carries for a total of 18 yards. Baker had 10, or 12 carries for 67 yards. Gutierrez ran the ball 61 um, yards on nine carries, and then Peterson, after that first quarter, he touched the ball no more because he had 164 yards in four attempts. Meanwhile, Sterling ran quite a few plays, let's face it. I mean, on their last three drives prior to the one that they fumbled, they ran 37 plays on three drives, so it's not like the B-Diggers played their best defense of the night, but they kept them out of the end zone and off the scoreboard. Exactly, but, you know, still, even though it seemed like a lot, Sterling didn't have that much offense, 256 yards total, um, 115 of that in the air as Kerjanic threw the ball 17 times, completing seven of those. 141 yards on the ground. Rose had seven carries for uh, 22 yards. Uh, Stutzman had 13 carries for 54 yards. Graves had five carries for 16 yards. Then Wolliver, Miller, and Chavez combined for less than 20 together. Uh, quarterback James Kerjanic had four carries for 26 yards, and that's just about all. All she wrote for And Sterling. the Bee Diggers, for the third time this season, all at home, register a shutout. That includes the first and second team as they win the game here by a score of 41 nothing. as we bring in head coach Randy Dreitz with only one regular season game remaining. Dave and I will be on the road, and we'll talk about that here uh, coming up in just a few minutes with uh, Brush leading 28 to nothing at halftime. First of all, Coach, how cold was it down there? It was getting cold. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, you can feel that moisture in the air, and... Our football field took a beating. It looks like. Uh, hopefully, we can we can get it mended up a little bit. Uh, I was wor- really worried about that, and it's sloppy right out there in the middle. And you know that snow we had last night really made it sloppy. Was it hard to cut from the very beginning? Hard to go east and west, or was it more, let's say, cuttable in the beginning of the game? And obviously, as the game wore along, harder to go east and west, and easier to go north and south. Well, it was at the beginning of the game. It was. Uh, you know, really soppy. It, it, it wasn't easy to cut all night long, and we had some situations tonight where you could it could tell that you, you couldn't really plant and and uh, react uh, real quick to something, or you'd slip and fall. And so that, that the conditions were a little slippery, but you know we made it through and uh, did a great job. Was there a concern with the passing game because Kyle was overthrowing lots of receivers? All of a sudden, hits Brown in the end zone, hits Brown on a fourth down, hits Baker on a play that. He was so open, you and I might have gone the distance. Well, maybe you, not me. But, but, I mean, the passing game obviously worked out a lot better uh, as we approach halftime and into the opening drive of the third quarter and later in the third quarter. Uh, Most definitely. Uh, Kyle was rushing, I think, a little bit in the first half. And, uh, you know, um, 
kind of putting a little bit too much on the ball and overshooting some guys, but uh, talked a little bit about halftime about it, and he did much better the second half. And you know, we uh, we're we're capable of throwing the ball. We just got to practice it and and keep getting better at it and keep working on it and and that type of thing because everybody knows that we run the football and that's what we do, but. Uh, I'm, you know, when we get into playoffs and, and that type of thing, we're going to have to definitely throw the ball once in a while. And so we keep practicing it, and, and we're going to get better. Coach, what's your take on the way your defense was able to defend and play against the Sterling offense, which had three double-digit drives? They moved the ball down the field three times, but your defense came up with clutch plays and kept them off the scoreboard. Well, thank goodness. Um, There's a few times there where I, it was disappointing. We had them in long situations, and whether it be a long pass or driving the football, and we're going to take a look at that in the film and see what we need to correct and improve on. But uh, we definitely uh, going to have to improve and, and not allow that to happen when it comes playoff time. All right, because it was such an issue last year on the negative side. I, I think it's only fair to ask the question now after seven games how you would assess special teams. I know you don't punt the ball much, Obviously, Javier Munoz doing a pretty decent job on the uh, on the extra points, but kickoff coverage, which, and I know there's no such thing as punt coverage when you haven't punted in a few games, but what about the kickoff coverage? Because those have been opportunities that you've had throughout the course of the season quite a bit. Well, you know, coming into the season, we really made an emphasis on it. <clears throat> and uh, Coach Schwent, uh, we went to a clinic, and he uh, brought up a few things this year, and he's done a tremendous job with that. And uh, so I, I think we're doing a better job. And, you know, I think all the players know that we have to emphasize that and, and do a good job of it and and make sure that because of what happened uh, to us last year a few times and even the year before that, and we, we've just had to do a better job this year. And, and we uh, really work on it and uh, emphasize it a lot. Finally, Coach, this was the regular season home finale when you put together what your team did during the regular season at home and you had four of your five games go to a running clock and the only game that didn't go to a running clock, you beat the number one team of the state at the time, Platte Valley, 28-10. to 10. I don't know if you give them an A-plus, but it's got to be a high grade for what your team did, the support of the fans and everything that went on throughout the 2013 season, and it's still not over once you get to the playoffs. Uh, most definitely. I, we've got great fan support, and our players have been working really hard, and you know, I, I'm I'm sure proud of their effort and the things that they do. And you know, we we're still going to go back to the drawing board and make sure that we can do the the bases of blocking and tackling and and doing those things. But uh, it, it's a fun group of guys, and and they work hard and in practice and and want to be better. And you know, they've done just about everything I've asked of them all year long. And and so we've got to make sure that we keep uh, you know taking one game at a time and and uh, preparing to make ourselves better. Coach, congratulations on another big win tonight. Thank you. That's Brushhead Coach Randy Dreitz as the Bee Diggers take out the Sterling Tigers 41 to nothing. Bee Diggers back in action coming up on Friday night on the road against the Fort Lupton Blue Devils. We'll have the game starting at 7 o'clock right here on 1010 as well as KSIR.com. You can always uh, get to our KSIR B106 channel on YouTube. We'll have videos, uh, video highlights of this game. And, of course, follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports. Sound engineer and producer of Brush Bee Digger football tonight has been Rose Condas. Our replay coordinator is Alan Lance. And, of course, our coordinator for all the high school football tonight, not only for the Bee Diggers but the Fort Morgan Mustangs, has been Brandy Ingersoll. For Dave Urich, I'm John Beltran, as you've been listening to Brush Bee Digger football tonight from Bee Digger Stadium. The final score once again, Brush 41, Sterling nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.